Working with quantifiers, there's two really important statement types that we'd like to be able to use a lot of the time. The first is the statement that every object satisfying the predicate kit P also satisfies the predicate Q. So the use of the word every in this statement implies that we're going to need a universal quantifier, so I'll put that for all x there. And we know that a P of x and a Q of x are going to be involved. The only question is what should the connective between P and Q be? A naive answer is to use the conjunction for all x, p of x is true, and q of x is true. But let's think of what this is saying. This is saying everything in our domain, so I'll just write everything, is a p and a q. That's not what I want to say. I want to say that everything that already is a p is a q, even though some things aren't going to have the predicate p apply to them. So what I really should have is I should have a conditional. For everything in my universe, if it is a p, then it is a q. So a conditional is the correct way to symbolize the statement, every p is a q. When symbolizing the statement, some objects with the property p will have the property q, we will have an existential quantifier. Because of the word sum, that means that it's true for at least one object in our domain, not necessarily all of them. We'll have a p of x, and we'll have a q of x. And this time, the conjunction is appropriate, because what we want to say is there is something in our universe that is both a p and a q. Finally, let's talk about what's going to happen when we have multiple quantifiers and multiple subjects. Let's take, as an example, the statement c of xy, meaning that x and y are classmates. Observe that in this case, uh, the order of the subjects x and y doesn't matter. If x is y's classmate, then that means that y is x's classmate. So this is not going to be like the planets orbiting each other. The order is not going to matter. So in the first case, let's consider where I have two existential quantifiers. Another way to write this would have been there exists an x such that there exists a y such that c of x, y. But when all of my quantifiers are the same, it, but when all of my quantifiers are the same, I like to just use a single quantifier and then all of the variables next to it. What this means is that we have one object called x and it is being paired or is classmates with another object called y. That's all there is to it. One x, one y. But suppose we have the statement there exists an x such that for all y, x and y are classmates. So what that means is we have one student that somehow is classmates with every other student, actually including themselves, but don't think too hard about that for this example. So that's an example of what it looks like when we have existential quantifier first, followed by a universal quantifier. We existentiate the x, and then we take all of the y's. Let's consider the examples where we start with a universal quantifier. Here, we start with having every x be classmates with some y. That doesn't mean that they all have to be classmates with the same y. So for example, this x could be a classmate with this y. This x could be a classmate with this y. Maybe this x is a classmate with both of these y's. It doesn't say that they only have one classmate. They just are guaranteed to have at least one classmate. And this x can be classmates with this y. So here's an example of a universal quantifier occurring and then an existential quantifier. Finally, in the case where for all x and for all y, x and y are classmates, that means that everybody in the school is classmates with everybody else in the school. And this is the worst of the diagrams, which is why it is last. Everybody is a classmate with everybody else.